Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Gary and I hope you're having a fantastic day or evening. Wherever you are in today's story, found out his fiancée cheated on him with her boss after he gained access to her phone and discovered she had been having an affair with her boss two months before proposed to her. Now her life is a wreck after her affair got exposed and she got fired from her job. Now, let's get into today's story. I really wonder when I will get past this. I and my fiancé have been together for six years. I proposed to her during COVID and she was actually having an affair when she accepted my proposal. Why would anybody do that? Why would someone accept a marriage proposal from one person while sleeping with somebody else? Anyway, this is a long post. I have been typing it out for weeks. It is therapy for me in a way. Not really looking for any advice, just trying to empty myself out somewhere and tell my story. I'm a pretty awkward guy. I've never been big with the ladies, but when I met my fiancé, let's call her best. I was head over heels in love. Within a minute. I had never been in love before, but I knew she was the one I wanted to spend my life with. As soon as I met her for some reason, she seemed to really like me as well. And we were talking about kids and moving in together. By the end of the week, the time up until discovery day was great. At least it was for me, it obviously couldn't have been that great for Bess. One day, I happened to see a glimpse of a message on her phone that made me pause. I laid awake that night and got up while she was sleeping and went through it. I'm very comfortable with technology. I actually make a living through some mobile apps I made. I'm not super rich, but I could comfortably take a year off without suffering any long-term economic consequences. Anyway, I didn't find anything absolutely conclusive, but I did find a lot of suspicious stuff like deleted messages. She also had a Snapchat contact with an icon that indicated a lot of interaction. There were also some pictures of a guy the first didn't recognize. So I installed spyware to monitor her phone. I did a Google search and selected the most expensive service I could find I could even turn the camera and microphone on remotely. The next day, Bess was supposed to go on a five-day business trip. She works in sales. So this wasn't necessarily something that was strange for her. As soon as she was out the door, the messages started going back and forth. I was devastated. I vomited several times. I just couldn't believe what I was reading for a long time. I refused to accept what it meant. I became obsessed and started going through everything I could get access to. I found out their affair had started more than two months before I proposed to her, her affair partner. A work colleague was a married man, ten years older than her with three children and a wife that was seven months pregnant. At this point, the final insult that day was when I could hear them in action in a hotel room where they professed their love for each other. They talked about running away and starting a new family. I was totally distraught. I had no idea what to do. I didn't have the guts to call and confront her. In the end, I ended up calling my best friend since childhood. Let's call him. K. K grew up in a Brazilian household. He was already tough as nails when he and his mother moved in next door when I was 12. This was in the UK. By the way, Kay didn't know a word of English. But over the first summer, we became close friends and I learned some Portuguese and he learned some English. I guess we bonded. So strongly through a shared trauma. Me and Kay have been inseparable since which is kind of weird because I'm a shy awkward nerd. Kay is very popular and not afraid of anything. Unlike me. I told Kay everything and showed him the messages and the emails I managed to uncover. He was silent for a long time. He told me that he couldn't give me any specific advice because this was something I had to deal with. I had to deal with this the way that was right for me. He then proceeded to remind me about a girl he had been with that had cheated on him. He went nuclear and exposed her to family and friends and then did no contact. I had no idea what to do for the next few days, we packed all her stuff and drove it to a storage unit, then changed the locks on my apartment and prepared to pick her up from the airport. 
Bess was all happy and laughing when she got into the car. But then she instantly noticed that something was wrong with me. I just told her I wasn't feeling well. Kay smiled at her and told her I had a fantastic surprise plan for her at her parents' house. I didn't say anything. Not a single word. The entire trip. I tried to not let her see my face and I faked a smile as best as I could from the moment. Bess got into the car the rest of the day seemed like it played out in slow motion. I had already talked to our parents the day before and told them we were coming by. I told them I had a surprise announcement to make. When we arrived, there were hugs and smiles and I almost backed out at that point. I love her parents. They've been so good to me and always made me feel welcome soon. Bess was sitting on the sofa in between her parents. At some point, someone asked about the big surprise. Kay encouraged me to go on. I started off by telling her parents how fond I was of them and how grateful I was that they had welcomed me into their family and treated me in such a way that I, I always felt welcome. Then I choked up for a few minutes. I had this entire speech planned out. It was eloquent and composed. I totally forgot my speech. So I just blurted it out. Bess has been cheating on me with a work colleague that has kids and his wife is seven months pregnant. The engagement is off, the wedding is off. Our relationship is over. Bess. Your stuff is in the storage container. I just dropped the key on the floor. This is goodbye forever. I walked out while everyone was just sitting there silent. I heard Kay tell them that I needed time to heal and to not contact me unless it's absolutely necessary. In the car, Kay told me to post to the Facebook group. The Facebook group was where we were planning the wedding. Everybody was on there. My entire family, her entire family, friends, everyone I posted a short message almost identical to what I told her parents and then disconnected from the group. Kay kept telling me he was proud of me that one day I would look back at this and be happy that I stood up for myself. I was just stunned. Nothing about this. Felt good or real. The next plan stop was the affair partner's wife. When she opened the door, I just blurted it all out and didn't even introduce myself. I'm pretty sure she slapped me at some point as I gave her a thumb drive with the evidence on it. Her husband came around the corner behind her, his wife immediately started screaming and told him to get lost and not come near her. He tried making excuses. But as soon as he took a step forward, Kay was right up in his face instantly. You heard the lady get out after a bit more back and forth. He eventually packed a bag and scuttled off. Kay talked to his wife for a while and I was just trying to process my screwed up life in my mind. In the end, we were invited inside the house of Kay's mother and agreed to spend the night there until her father could arrive. The next morning to pick her up. She was scared her husband would turn back up and she did not want to be alone inside. I was treated like I had turned invisible. No one saw me or noticed me. I just sat there crying silently. I understand she was in a much worse situation than me because I was not married and did not have kids. At some point, they all fell asleep while I still sat there crying. I decided that I was going to just end it. I started looking for pills but I couldn't find any. I just couldn't get my head around. What was happening? Her father arrived at 5.30 in the morning and I opened the door to let him in. He calmly asked me some questions and if I was okay, he then went inside to find his daughter while I just stood there holding the door. Shortly after Kay came out to talk to me, I stared at him for a minute. Then I just passed out. I woke up in the hospital and it's now been three months since this happened, stayed with me the first few weeks after I returned home, because he was scared. I was going to try and off myself again. I haven't talked to my ex-fiancé ever since I changed my phone number and blocked her email address and all access on social media. She has come to my door a few dozen times. She talks through the door sometimes for as long as four hours. She talks about how sorry she is and begs for forgiveness. She has told me that she has broken it off with the affair partner and that the affair partner's wife is divorcing him. 
She also said that she's been fired because the affair partner's wife reported them to our update. I ended up deciding to try to talk to her parents to see whether or not they could get her to stop coming to my door. I don't really care what her reasons are. I don't care what she wants. I realize now that my perception of her and who she actually is in real life are two different people. I just want her out of my life so I can move on anyway. Before I was ready to talk to her parents, her dad showed up at my door. He had a six-pack of my favorite beer and he asked if we could talk. I said sure and told him I'm on my way out. Maybe we could walk and talk. I didn't want him to come inside. Not just because I've been a mess and my apartment reflects that, but I didn't want to let him in and maybe suddenly his daughter would be at the door or something. He popped two bottles of beer and he just started to talk. Initially, he apologized on behalf of his daughter. And then he told me that his wife and daughter had been pressuring him to go see me to somehow get me to talk to his daughter. He told me that his daughter was spoiled and selfish and that he hoped that for once she would have to face the full consequences of her actions. Maybe he hoped she could be a better person in the future. Final update. I asked him if everything was okay between us and he said there were no problems at all but jokingly said maybe it was time for him to get a divorce. Apparently, the confrontation between him and his wife and daughter didn't go that well after meeting me. But this time he told me he wasn't going to back down. This seemed to be a fight that had been a long time coming for him. As for Kay, he has been great as he always is. He has been supporting me and encouraging me all along now that I am out of it. I realize how right he was that one day I would be proud of what I had done. I stood up for myself, something I usually never do and I feel awesome about it. I will 100% do it again in the future when necessary. My ex showed up again at my door and I actually talked to her this time. She begged me to let her in so we could talk. I told her okay, but I had some things to do. And that I would meet her at a local park in a half hour. I didn't want her inside my mess. And as some of you pointed out, maybe she could make some accusations or something if I met her alone. Strangely enough, I wasn't nervous and felt kind of good. Actually. Anyways, I went to the park and she was there crying. I sat down and we had some meaningless small talk. She tried to interrogate me about what me and her father talked about. I told her that was private between me and him and frankly none of her business. I was starting to get bored. So I asked her what she wanted to talk about. She then went into this hour-long tirade about how sorry she was that she loved me so much. I told her that I forgive her because I don't want to carry that anger, hatred and hurt anymore. Getting back together though, that is never going to happen. People who love other people don't do what she did to me. I can never trust her again. She cried hysterically and I sat there and watched. It was strange because I have never felt that detached from anybody. I called her dad to come get her and I told her that I hoped she would get some counseling and fix herself. Something was obviously broken inside of her. Then I got an Uber and I went to the local animal shelter and adopted a kitten. I named the kitten Shiny. Kay joked that he was blinded by my new shiny spine. The kitten's name is Shiny to always remind me to stand up for myself. I am happy I managed to take the high road and just be honest with her without yelling or calling her names. I've been playing with my amazing kitten having a lot of fun and Kay is coming over later to play some video games and swing down some beers. I am sad about my ex. I feel sorry for her. I will miss the good times we had, but I am also relieved that I am done with this. Now, I received some hard uncomfortable truths from some of you, but it was what I needed to hear. Wow! I'm very happy to hear about the support system you've had around you during this difficult time period in your life. Your friend Kay sounds like a great lifetime friend to have around. Also, you definitely can't go wrong with having a kitten to keep you some company. They say that a dog is a man's best friend, but in this case, your kitten will be your best friend along with Kay. 
It's also great to hear that your ex-fiancé's father had so much understanding of your situation. He appears to be a great man and a selfless person. What you have gone through is absolutely tough. But I can tell you are trying to make the best of it. And most importantly, you learned how to stand your ground. I wish you all the best. Thanks for taking the time to listen to today's story. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already done so and comment below on what your thoughts are on today's story. If there's a story you would like to share with me about your own situation or someone else's, then please do not hesitate to contact me. Take care everyone.